Welcome back to the Accessible Art History YouTube channel. This video will be the start of a new series where we will be focusing on architecture. For our first feature, we will be discussing the Florence Cathedral. It is a masterpiece of Renaissance innovation, so it's the perfect one to start this series off with. Today, the Florence Cathedral is the third largest in the world, after St. Peter's in Rome and St. Paul's in London. But when it was completed in the 15th century, it was the largest one, it is 502 feet long, 295 feet wide at the crossing, and 295 feet high from the floor to the bottom of the dome. This building was commissioned to replace a much older church that had fallen into disrepair. Florence had become a wealthy city due to bustling trade, especially in wool, and it wanted to represent that with its local cathedral. Arnolfo de Cambio was given the architectural commission and construction began in 1296. He was a well-known architect and had designed the Palazzo Vecchio and Santa Croce. De Cambio's plan for the new cathedral represented a distinct break from the earlier Gothic style. Although it is still massive, the outside of the building lacks the recognizable buttresses of earlier designs. When De Cambio died, the guilds of wool merchants elected Giotto to continue his work. Giotto was also in charge of the Campanile, or bell tower, so this ensured a sense of continuity between the two buildings. Andrea Pisano served as Giotto's assistant and took over when the latter died in 1337. However, almost 100 years later, the cathedral still did not have a roof. The interior, including the high altar, was subject to the elements and that discouraged parishioners from visiting. So, in 1418, a contest was held for the design of the dome. Filippo Brunelleschi won and the dome was built in about 20 years. The cathedral was finally consecrated on March 25, 1436 by Pope Eugene IV, 140 years after construction was started. This building was constructed in a typical basilica plan and was meant to resemble a Latin cross. It has a wide central nave that is flanked by four bays. On either side of those bays, there is an aisle. Because this is to be the main cathedral of Florence, it had to be large enough to accommodate the ever-growing population. The outside of the cathedral was designed in such a way that it would become a jewel of the city. Florence was one of the wealthiest city-states in Italy, so their church had to reflect that. Bands of different colored marble, red, green, and white, were brought in from around Italy in order to create beautiful designs on the exterior. Red and green are contrasting colors, meaning that they are opposite of each other on the color wheel. They pop when placed next to each other, especially when white is added. It creates a fabulous and rich-looking facade. In addition to the colorful marble, the city commissioned 12 statues of various figures to decorate the facade. Some of the greatest names of early Renaissance sculpture, including Donatello and Michelangelo, contributed works. However, because the cathedral was so tall, it was soon discovered that the statues that had already been created were simply too small to be seen from the ground. But modern day visitors can view many of these pieces in various museums around Florence. Despite the beautiful exterior, the most famous part of the Florence Cathedral is the dome. As mentioned before, Brunelleschi won the design contest that would finally allow the building to be finished. One of the stipulations was that it could not use any buttresses. These were seen as outdated and didn't represent the modernity and power that the city wanted to convey. So, Brunelleschi based a design on the dome of the Pantheon in Rome. But there was a problem. The Pantheon was made of concrete. After nearly 1500 years, people had forgotten how to make concrete that would set and hold in the same manner. To circumvent the concrete problem, Brunelleschi created a revolutionary design. The dome on the top of the cathedral is actually made of two pieces. The inner dome, which is about six feet thick, was made of self-supporting herringbone pattern. The outer dome was not as thick, but helped to provide protection against the elements. Traditionally, buttresses would have been used to help support such a massive dome, but since this wasn't allowed, Brunelleschi had to get creative. Despite his secretive nature, historians have figured out a few ways he achieved success. One, instead of traditional stone, he opted to use brick. Not only was it lighter, but it was easier to source and produce. Two, this dome is actually octagonal instead of round. This allowed the weight to be distributed differently and more effectively. And three, although buttresses were banned, interior supports were not. Brunelleschi instructed that barrel hoops were built into the brick, holding up the dome from within. By using these techniques, Brunelleschi was able to create a dome worthy of the city of Florence. The Florence Cathedral is a marvel of engineering. Although it took 140 years to complete, each and every detail was crafted to create a space worthy of a growing city. If you are able to, I highly recommend climbing the over 400 steps to the top of the dome. 
It will give you a new appreciation for the work that went into its creation. Plus, you can't beat the view. Thank you.